It must have been very difficult two days for you, and so I'll try to keep it short and entertaining. Uh, is anybody here using some legacy framework? Cool, cool. So this might be useful for you, actually. So I'll start with a bit of theory, then I'll show you what I did, then I'll show you what you can do at home. So uh, I guess everybody here loves to learn something new because you are on the conference, you are investing a very nice day, you are sitting inside the building where it's like freezing and you're listening to all of us for a whole day. So you learn. You learn on conferences or you learn in university, you learn from your colleagues, you read blogs, you listen to podcasts, always learning. You learn what's new in Symfony, what's new in PHP 8, that there will be some JIT, there are some new cool features with Docker, there are some asynchronous PHP. And you probably want to try it on Monday. Who, who wants to try something new on Monday in, in work? Good, good. Let's create more, more legacy code. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and that, that's the problem. Like when you, when you teach somebody, that's what I do. I look a little bit different, but that's what I'm trying to do. I help people with learning new stuff, learning new stuff, and, uh, and trying to get them out of their shitty code so it looks a little bit better and they enjoy it a little bit more. But the problem is, every time I do this, I mean, I come to the company, I talk with the people, I explain them how you can do it better, I ask them why it's done this way, they have usually some reasons, like it's legacy code or it's very old. It's always the same thing, like uh, this is how you use Doctrine, this is where you don't use Doctrine, this is how MVC works, this is type hints, type declarations, this is test case, PHP unit, and they have to learn and learn. And usually it ends up like there is one senior guy who is kind of like smart and he tries to teach other people. But it is this kind of vicious circle. Because when you like start writing some code, I guess you know this, it becomes legacy day, day you wrote it. And the problem is the um, legacy code, Sh sorry, <laughs> should I stop moving or? <laughs> okay. Uh, the, uh, the problem with legacy is that we create legacy because we think it's cool. I mean, uh, I came to the PHP when it was like PHP 5.2 and there was coming like PHP 5.3 and there was this cool name, cool thing called namespaces and you could like put it into directory and the directory could have the same namespace as, as the other files and it was pretty cool and like, that's great. But I mean, like now, like four or five years later, we have like strict types, uh, covariant types, uh, integer, boolean, so on, so on, JIT, arrow functions. We have more and more code. So I think like what is cool today, in five years, will seem like like a legacy to us, and that's that's a big problem because we create constantly legacy code, even if you thought it's very cool. I mean, like, when there was a WordPress, does anybody work with WordPress here? Okay, sorry. And <laughs> I mean, if, if there was, when, when WordPress started, it was really, really great because there was no better tool to create, like, content management systems. And now some people love it, some people hate it. But the, my point is that when it started, it was, like, the best. It was like Elon Musk or something like this. But now, not, not so many. And that's the problem with code. The more of the code there exists, the bigger problems you have. You have to maintain it, you have to write tests, you have to send junior programmers there that will try to find something useful there. So if you want to actually refactor something that has one million lines of code and you want to add type declarations, it may take you some time. And most people think this is like very fine. Like, uh, it's a big project, it's legacy, yeah, it's, it's so expensive, it takes so much time, it's just the way it works. So you, you read books about how to refactor legacy applications, and there you can see, uh, take one file by one, or decouple this to static methods, or do this, do this. But I don't think it doesn't have to be this way, because it's boring, you know, and I want to, I want to work with one file the same speed as with one million files. So, this is kind of like 
practical stuff we did. We migrated one framework to another. And this is the size of pull request that, uh, that was the merge one. And I have like a question for you. How long do you think it took us to do this? In, in days or hours? A week? 30 days? Two months? <laughs> Good, yeah. Yeah, maybe more, maybe less, I don't know. <laughs> Seven days? Okay. A little bit. A year, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, so I'll tell you later. And uh, just the idea, like 40, 44,000 lines, it doesn't mean like there are tests and fixtures and doctrine migration. It means like 44,000 lines of really code that does something. So in, in total, there were like 200,000 lines. And uh, just the idea, it was... Uh, API project and it had 151 different routes. So, I wonder, did anybody migrate it framework from one to another framework? Like from Zen to Symfony? Some other directions? Only, only from Zen to Symfony? All Laravel to Zen? Cool. So, if you did this, then you probably know that uh, all frameworks are very similar. Like, it's still MVC. There might be some differences, like Laravel has container kind of like static, and other frameworks have kind of like normal container. And the naming is usually very similar. Sometimes the class is located somewhere else. Sometimes it's in YAML, but they are really, really, really similar, like languages themselves. So when we migrated from Netta to Symfony is like red is Netta because we remove it. Uh, we basically had to replace classes, add some requests. Sometimes there was a, there was a like call on the object instead of on service. So basically, you have to replace many code in some logical way. Sometimes you need to add factory because uh, in in a, in Netta, the, the response could be an object, but we need to wrap it in something. And imagine if you have like 151 files and you need to add factory. And one of the most exciting examples is that uh, if you need to automate something uh, like row definitions and you have them uh, in one file and you have them like with static call, then there's a reference to some a uh, constant that is a string, and it goes to some class. And what you want to do is, like in Symfony, use, for example, routes or YAML definitions, whatever you prefer. Then it would take a lot of time. So we had to create a migration script that will detect all this, and also find the value of this, and move it to each each uh, each presenter or control by by itself. And uh, in the end, it's, as you can see, like if you want to look more about this specific migration, just uh, I wrote an English post about it. And now it's kind of done. Like there are some cases missing, like forms or, or components. But you can already use it, download it, it's, it's free. And that's, that's what I meant by moving from legacy, refactoring file by file, to refactoring by pattern. So if you have 1,000 controllers, you don't think like it's 1,000 control, it's basically a controller. So all you need to do is migrate the control pattern from Netta to Symfony. But they do have some questions so far. Just shout, shout if you have some ideas. OK, so it takes us only 80 hours, but uh, it takes us so long because we had to actually create these rules. So we had to think how, we had to see how Netta works, how Symfony works, and create these rules. There's also migration from, from Neon to YAML and from Latte to Twig. So if, if you would probably do this, uh, it might take you like 10 or 15 hours. And uh, that's, that's kind of like main advantage if you don't refactor file by file, but if you refactor pattern and if you use some Precompiled set of rules. 
So personally, I wouldn't use a rector or something that's very small because you can do it obviously manu manually faster. But uh, with growing sites, it becomes much more effective. Like uh, you don't have to care if you have one million files or ten million because it's still just just a number. But uh, Rector cannot still do all the work for us, so it, it doesn't mean like uh, you will have no work tomorrow. The main point of Rector is to to save you the boring work, like moving files and and yeah, it's my favorite favorite robot. <laughs> So the main goal of, of Rector is like to make working with legacy go away, so you can like always work them with most up-to-date Symfony or PHP or Laravel or Zend, and never have to learn how to upgrade stuff. So it's possible like to upgrade or switch framework in one month if you want to try it, and you don't want to convince your boss like. Oh, we have to stop our project for two years, and it will cost like two hundred thousand dollars, and nothing will change. Yeah, I guess not. So that's that's what we did. You can you can already do this. Um, download the migration from Reddit to Symfony. The next project I'm looking for is uh, I have an appointment next week in my country, and they have very old Zend one framework, and they need to migrate it to Symfony 4, so that will be fun. But what if you don't need to migrate framework? Now something that you can like actually use today. I guess, uh, do you know PHP 10? Cool, cool. So this might become useful to you. So this is like analyzing some script with PHP 10. Basically, there are like 53 errors. It's hard to see in the back. And what PHP 10 does is like it finds what's going on in the code, and it'll suggest you something that you should do sometimes or throw an error, but it doesn't fix it for you. But if if there are errors like this should be bool or this should be integer, well, it's like no brainer. So Rector has a rule set that is about like type declarations, so you can complete param return type anonymous functions and you can run it on your code then check with PHP stun again and before we had like 53 errors and now there should be yeah, six so you can like use it to also to your daily daily uh, continuous integration set and complete type and upgrade PHP and so on and the last thing I want to show you is uh, that you can add actually Rector to your continuous integration and you can add very simple sets regardless like framework or what level of PHP are you using and detect some code quality or dead code where are sets that will find unused variables, parameters, uh, unused private methods, unused public methods which is very useful if you have like very very big uh, legacy code. And uh, if you like this project, you can support it on, uh, on Patreon or give it a star. And that's all from me. Thank you.